Hey guys, Matt here from Pilot Practice Exam. So, quick video for you, Mitch Longstaff. Um, great question about your how do you practice, you know, your navs and stuff like that. So, let me tell you this you can do it like a thousand or more, you know, navs without ever leaving the ground. You can practice all your outbound calls, inbound calls, your 10 mile calls. Um, you can practice your radio changes, and all you do is just draw it up on a map, like grab out one of your maps and draw it up. You see, see I can draw this triangle here. Um, so this triangle that I've drawn is from uh, Griffiths, Condoblin to Young now. That's not even in my area, but let's just use it as an example. So let's say we're taking, it, taking off out of Griffith, you know, whatever our outbound call is going to be. So let's just practice them in our heads, and let's pick another location and practice them. So, you know, if I, I'm not sure how well you can see this, but um, over here is, uh, that's Griffith. So we're going to take off out of there and we're going to head uh, northeast. And then we're going to head southwest, uh, sorry, southeast. And then we're going to head direct west. And just by chance it happens out like that. So we just practice our call. So uh, Griffith traffic, Pioneer 8313. Airborne off runway, whatever it is, and climbing overhead for departure to Condoblin uh, at whatever altitude it is, and um, heading whatever heading it is. So it's probably say zero four five or something like that, and at uh, cruise at whatever altitude it is. And then you'd say departure time X Y Z, and then you'd say Griffith traffic. So there's an example. You just pick a spot on the map and draw it up with a pencil and practice it as your outbound call. And then what you do is you go to uh, see so flying along, and you get to say here on the map. And then I'll show you a bit closer. So you get to wherever your ten mile point is, say here pick a point wherever 10 miles is based on the scale of your map and your ruler, grab it out and practice it. So, uh, Condoblin traffic, Pioneer 8313 inbound, 10 miles at altitude, whatever it is, and uh, for flight overhead and then turning southeast at altitude, Condoblin traffic, or Condoblin traffic, Pioneer 8313 inbound, at altitude uh, to fly overhead midfield crosswind for landing on runway such and such traffic permitting uh, condoblin traffic so just practice all your calls that you can possibly practice um, and mix it up you know perhaps try flying the other way so this time you're coming from young to condoblin condoblin traffic uh, piney 8313 Inbound from the uh, what would that be southeast one zero miles at altitude. You now you're flying west, so consider your hemispherical levels. So you're going to be at say four thousand five hundred. So Pioneer eight three one three. Uh, sorry, Condoglin traffic in Pioneer eight three one three inbound at four five four thousand five hundred one zero miles. To full and then intentions, whatever they are, to fly overhead or to you know cross midfield, cross wind, or to uh, fly overhead and depart to the southeast, or whatever you're going to do. Okay, so intentions and then whatever location traffic is, Condoblin traffic. Okay, so that's one of the things you do, and then other things you do is um, throw scenarios at yourself. So, for as an example, let's say we take off at Griffith here, over here. And we fly up here to uh, Condoblin. Let's say, let's throw a scenario at ourselves and we get halfway. Okay? And we suddenly have an engine failure or an oil pressure alarm or uh, low fuel alarm. Or throw some scenario at yourself. What are you going to do? Just pick a point. Just throw a line along the map. Just run your pencil along and go now. Okay? Or get someone else to go now. And or roll a dice, you know, that that matches that distance and then go right what am I going to do if I get a low fuel alarm there or a low oil pressure alarm there am I going to push on to Condoblin or is there an airport like for example this one here uh, Lake Cargelico 
There's an airport just there. Okay? So I could divert to that uh, Lake Cargelico. Um, there's probably other airports around there as well. So this is what I'm on about. Just throw a thousand scenarios at you. There's no need to work all this stuff out in the air. Now the other thing is this. Let's say throw scenarios at yourself like this. You're flying along here. You plan, say, this is an easterly direction. So you plan, say, 1,500, 3,500, 5,500, or 7,500 because of the hemispherical levels. Okay, so what do you do if you're flying at 3,500 and you get halfway on the severe turbulence? Do you drop down to 1,500 or climb up to 5,500? Throw those scenarios at yourself and practice them. What do you do if you're flying along at 1,500 in this cloud? Okay, so you climb up to 3,500. What do you do if there's 3,500 in this cloud? You drop down to 1,500 or go up to 5,500? Just there's, there's thousands of scenarios you can practice without ever leaving the ground. So just keep doing it over and over and over and over and over. Pick different spots on all these different legs. Draw yourself up another one. Now, let me show you another one. I'm going to draw this up in front of you. I'm not sure you can see it because of the light angle, but I'll point this down at it anyway. What you, I'll show you a close-up in a sec. Pick any point. This is what your instructor is going to do in your flight exam. And you're going to have to draw a right angle across your flight path. Okay, and then you're going to have to do a diversion. Because what they're going to do is going to, at some point in time, they're just going to go, stop, um, you can't see, the cloud's no good, you need to divert. Now I'm going to show you this one here that I'm drawing up right now. And I'll hold it up in front of the camera and show you at um, close range. So we're flying along, and let's get it lined up. There it is there. So there was our original route, um, started down here, down here, sorry, this is back to front for me, and went all the way up here, okay? But what happened was, at that point there, our instructor said, stop, you can't proceed any further to up here, we need to go to that airport there. So what you do is you draw this line, this vertical line here, and you draw this horizontal line here, and then you draw this line from where you are on the map to your diversion there. And then what you do is you estimate that angle and you estimate that distance. So you might go, I need to turn this around so I can see it. So now I'm going to head northwest. It's about probably, I'm just estimating here, I'm guesstimating. It's about, I reckon, round, it's not quite 45, it's a bit more than 45 degrees. So it's way more than, say, 270 um, sorry, 270 is west, it's, it's, um, 305, it's probably about 310, and it's around about, say, 25, maybe 30 miles, so I'm going to just go with 30 miles, and I'm going to head, um, bearing, I don't know, say, 310, now, even though 310, it might actually be 300, it might be 320, it doesn't matter. Because it's only 30 miles, okay, if I had 310, I'm going to hit that location. And if I'm high enough, I'm going to see it. It's going to be straight in front of me or out to the left or right. I know that I'm going to be out, so I'm going to be scanning for it. And it's a town called Lake Cargelico, so I'm going to hit it. So that's basically... Um, you know, some of the nav stuff you can do without ever leaving the ground. So if you want more information, if you want, you know, me to explain something else, please tell me. Um, I'd love to explain, say, freezing levels. That's another hugely difficult one. Um, another classic difficult one is, you know, interpreting the, the weather, um, checking the huge one that most of you are going to have problem with, I think, is checking um, your... Con not your controlled airspace, your military airspace. So one of the problems with that is you, they have these RA1, RA2, RA3. So you're allowed to sort of plan through one, you're allowed to plan through one with permission with the other, and you're let, not allowed to plan at all through the other. And what happens is you often with those, you can't plan um, until the day of flight because what you've got to do is you've got to check them the morning of flight. So what that means is you've got to have two plans. You've got to have one that... You plan the night before, which is, you know, to go straight through the airspace if it's open. And you've got to have another one where you're going to go around 
and and back up if it's closed and then maybe you got another one where you got to go to a different level so sometimes like for example me flying from port macquarie to brisbane have a look on it yama airspace is who knows i don't know till i get up in the morning so often i've got a plan one that goes direct i've got a plan one that goes by grafton and then i've got to go plan one that goes further west if it's going to be closed same with newcastle I plan one that's direct if it's on a Sunday because I know the airspace air is going to be open. I plan one that's going to go through the laneway from Wingham to, uh, what's it called, Maitland if if it's going to be um, closed. And then sometimes we have two rings around Newcastle. We've got an inner ring and an outer ring. Usually the inner ring is active and the outer ring is not active, um, say around about probably 30% of the time. So I'll plan a route on based on the outer ring being unactive. So for example, if I was coming back from Dubbo um, and I go direct to Port Macquarie, I've got to fly over high mountains with lots of cloud and I've got to fly um, also over lots of Tiger country. Whereas if I head for, say, Foster from Dubbo, have a look at it on your map, I can go um, straight towards Foster, I can go down these valleys through the Hunter Valley, and if I had an engine out, I'd be able to just land anywhere on a road or a paddock or whatever. And if I had um, a problem, I could probably call up Newcastle and say, hey, let me in, I've got a problem, and they'd let me right in. But there's Maitland, Cessnock, and all those other airports. So what I would do is I would take off at Dubbo, I'd head towards Foster, and I'd head down one of those valleys to give, so I don't have to fly over Tiger Country. And the outer, the inner ring is active, the outer ring is non-active. So I'd be able to fly through the outer ring of the airspace and then turn up towards Port Macquarie and fly over the safe coastal zone. So there's some, I hope, I hope that sort of stuff has helped you. One of the things your instructor is going to throw at you during your cross-country exam is they're going to say, righto, um, so they're going to get you to plan your route and you're going to go and fly it. And then what they're going to do is, generally on the homeward leg, they're going to say, right over here, we're half or two-thirds of the way home. Okay, stop, you're lost. And you've got to do a lost scenario and find yourself. Okay? Well, they might say to you, right, I'm flying the plane and they'll get you to blindfold yourself or look down for 20 minutes. And they'll veer off course. And then you have to do a lost scenario. Another example is they'll, they'll um, <coughs> excuse me, they will fly, you know, half the leg home and then they'll say, stop, um, the cloud's closing in and then they'll say, turn around and head back to where you are and then you'll go, um, and then they'll say, no, we can't head back, the cloud's closed in, okay, what are you going to do? And generally what they're after is, especially if you're heading towards the coast, what they're after is you drop into a valley and follow the rivers towards the catchment area and then up the coast. And they'll probably get you to fly at 500 or 1,000. Okay? And another example they'll give you is you'll, you'll do that and you'll fly at 500 or 1,000 and then they'll say, right, uh, so for example, I was flying down the uh, valley towards uh, Camden. I was coming back from uh, Walker. And I was heading towards Port Macquarie and they said, stop, you need to veer to the south, there's too much cloud. So I had to drop into valley to the south, which took me towards uh, Taree. And then I dropped in the valley towards Taree. And what I had to do was they said, as we're heading down that valley, and I'm thinking, I'll go down that valley and I'll, then I'll turn north towards Port Macquarie. They said, no, we just got a radio message, Port Macquarie Airport is closed, you need to pick an alternative. So my closest... The most obvious one was the big airport, which is Taree. But I said, oh, I don't want my wife to drive all the way to Taree. So what I picked was Camden Haven, which is only about, say, 20 minutes, uh, 15 to 20 minutes from Port Macquarie. It's a grass one, right? But I had easy access to it because I was heading down the exact same valley that um, I could pop out of it and veer to the, to, towards it. So they're the types of scenarios that they're going to throw at you. Also, sometimes you go into a runway um, and they'll say, Say you've got two runways and there's a preferred one with the wind or there might be four runways. There's a preferred, preferred one with the wind. They'll say to you, um, the wind is 28017 knots. Runway 21 is closed. And what they're doing is they're closing your preferred runway and they're making you do a wind calculation 
to make sure you don't exceed the maximal crosswind for the runway that you have to select which is other than the best one so what you do is you select your next best one you do a wind calculation using the um, the angles and the projections you know for example your your one quarter your one half etc of your winds and what you do is you work out is that does that exceed my maximal crosswind for the aircraft I'm in if yes you have to go to a diversion and you tell them that and then they'll tell you to go and land if no then what you do is you select the next most appropriate uh, runway and you tell them that you've done the calculation and it does not exceed the maximal crosswind for this aircraft and then you set up to land on that one and but before you come in and land they'll say to you okay cool you've satisfied that land on the preferred runway they don't ever want you to endanger yourself so there's some of the scenarios let me know please mitch or anyone else if you want more information i'm going to pull this up now at 16 minutes i hope that's helped and all the best from matt pilotpracticeexams.com let me know if you like this hit youtube like share whatever please pay me back for all this effort by giving me a share giving me a like and a comment um, definitely a comment or a share is best. Thanks guys and have a good night.